Hello and welcome everybody, I am Socio Psycho, and today we look at a game called Velvet Assassins. Now this is an older game from 2009 by Replay Studios, but it's a pretty good game and so I wanted to cover that. This is also available on Mac. Now if you do decide to get this game, one thing to state is there is a small physics issue with NVIDIA and a way to fix that, which is very easy, will be listed in the description below. Velvet Assassin is a third-person stealth game with takedown infiltration aspects during World War II as you play British secret agent. Now one thing that is of interest to note in this game before we start is the fact that this was inspired by a, a real person by the name of Violetta Sesbro, who was a British secret agent during World War II. She was captured by the Nazis and tortured mentally and physically for over eight days, never giving up any information. She was soon followed to be executed at Ravenbrook at the age of 23. So this is based inspirationally off of an actual person and I thought that was really important to, to just list people who made a difference in the past. Now the options menu, you have your brightness as this is a stealth game and the main quality of it is shadows and lighting effects. So as you expect it has multiple degrees. We're going to go with what we are mainly for recording. You may want it darker. Audio. The music in the game does a really good job of continuing a pace of suspension because it is a stealth element. While there is a combat thesis in the game, Stealth is your main tool, and patience is what you need to master. Your controls are all rebindable with ease. Had no issues with that whatsoever. You might want to turn on your sneak so you don't have to keep toggling that over and over again. The rest of your visual effects will pop up on a small screen outside the game. It has a wide berth with screen resolutions as well as graphical fidelity. Mainly they affect the shadow quality over anything else. And the game from 2009 should not be taxing on your system at all. And it also runs around 60 frames per second so it is well balanced. It appeared as though I had found a way into the cathedral. I didn't know where the dark, musty vaults of the crypt would lead. The SS certainly were not here to hold a service. Whatever they were plundering, they were doing me a favor. They had finally delivered the butcher to me. I had to be careful. Shunsel and his infamous bodyguards could have been anywhere in the building. If there was an alarm, I would be certain to run into difficulties, and Shunsel, that psychopath, would take refuge behind his men. When we jump into the game, there's different types of missions, and before we start that, I want to say that this game has a little bit, not too hard, a little bit of a learning curve in the beginning. So the story element of the game is actually quite well written, very well voiced, and it increases the ambience of a feel as this is World War II era. Now, as you can see here, the third person quality and it doesn't look bad. I, obviously, some of the texture does resemble a 2009 game, but it's not horrible at all. There are objects that you can interact with, and some will be useful and some will not be. If you're wondering what or why I did that, the shadows play a huge element. So we just basically push this box into a line of sight, breaking off the shadows. Medkit to heal itself up. And the important thing to note about this game is that it has a really heavy stealth element to it. You want to be patient, you want to wait, you want to map out the enemy and make sure that everything you do is done to the best capability and not to leave any evidence laying around. The AI in the game does not need to be overly intelligent in this style and it plays heavily on a stealth aspect. So while it is capable of killing enemies once you are hit discovered, it is a lot harder. 
It does a really good job on balancing the game to a point to where you do not want to have to actually fight somebody, and it'd be much more easier just to sneak around. About learning patrols of the enemy, taking advantage of that, and basically being patient. Patience is a huge caliber in this game. The ambience of the entire level is one where you need to pay attention to your environment. The way the level is designed, the, the lighting effects, the music, how everything just falls together very succinctly. The patience element of the game is not a negative trait of it. It's important to find how the enemy patrols, how they move. And you're hoping you don't get discovered, you're hoping that you're in enough shadow. And as you can see the blue outline on the bottom left of the corner of the screen there of your character, that represents your shadow. It's your light gem. When it's blue, you are in the shadow. It's important to take your time with it. And the way the, it feels and handles is actually quite nice. It just propels you in this sense of adventure and I want to be careful, I want to sneak, I want to try the very best I can not to mess up. Definitely the experience had playing this game at nighttime with all the lights out only intensifies the emotion connection with the game. That's glass and you know people would hear me if I, well they weren't dead. If you rush in, you will die. This is not a first-person shooter. This is a stealth game. So, as you can see, uh, stealth is your friend. So, here we have a infiltration mission upon where we are dressed up as a Nazi officer, and the little white line that you see at the bottom is the suspicion meter, pretty much. The closer we get to enemies, the more it will decrease because they will be caught onto a disguise. So it's about finding a sort of balance and patrolling around their patrols to try to get through. This infiltrational design mechanic is actually quite entertaining because you think you need to be careful in what you're doing, but it also gets your own heart rate up because it's like, oh, is he gonna keep moving, is he gonna stop? It's a nice take on a infiltration mission. And if you do get spotted, then the enemy will just out and attack you. And on this current map, if you get spotted, then the snipers will take you out and that's definitely not good at all. So we need to make sure that we're not spotted. So another thing of interest is when you go to the menu screen, you have your mission, which basically just shows you the map layout of the base that you need to infiltrate, as well as character information. So here in your character, you have a small little experience level up category. Your strength determines how much damage you can take before dying. The stealth increases how fast you can go while crouched and the morphine increases the time that you are able to have a, a morphine hit. There are also obviously levels of difficulty in the game, secret objectives found per level, and collectible items. Now the collectible items are small little keepsakes. They could be a bottle of fine wine, they could be a metal, small rare little things which give you experience. These experience points, a thousand experience points then will have you able to place one star in a category that you want. This little option to hunt for collectibles is an incentive. It's not something that really makes or breaks the game. You don't need to be maxed out in any of these to be able to play the game in an entertaining way. It's just something that's extra given to a character, which is really appreciated. Your inventory categorizes all the items, obviously, you have. The collectibles is what I was talking about, like Signet Ring, Knight's Cross, Lighter. The rare type things that you find that give you experience form. So as you see right here, this is a collectible item and also morphine. We'll go into more what morphine exactly is. So you see I shot that guy and this one's all notice. he's like, what's going on? And whether I get found or not, one thing you can do with morphine is it puts you in this little trance world where you can attack forward. You have a timeline though, but you have to get in before. 
You get close, then when you're able to take a guy out and your morphine is down, so you need to find more morphine. It's a good little get out of jail 3 card, or a straight up attack because you don't want to wait, or however you decide to use it, if at all. It's another nice little mechanical ability that graphically is actually quite nice. And here you have your after mission stats, XP found and kills, everything pretty much, even soldier rating, how well that you've actually done on a mission and how you can continue something to push for if you want to try to get better in what you did the first time through. So the game is actually quite entertaining. Like I said, it has a high patience tolerance where it goes with the combat and the stealth element combined nicely. You don't want to fight because the combat is much harder, which it should be in a stealth game. It is enjoyable and it still is a very decent game. And for $5, I would absolutely recommend this to anybody else. And there are times when it's even on sale. This is one of the few games that actually does stealth decently for what it is. Thank you everybody for watching. I have been Socio Psycho. Feel free to comment and give your feedback about what you think of this game as well. And I will see you next time. <laughs>